Welcome back. Today I have something fun. This is an original Xbox, an astounding semi-transparent green color. Remember when technology was cool and showed off the internals? This one is from my friend Matt, and it no longer powers on after all these years. But this isn't just any Xbox, no. This is the Xbox Halo Edition, released to promote arguably the greatest first-person shooter game to ever exist, Halo Combat Evolved. This one appears to have spent some time in a Blockbuster video store and has been previously opened. Anybody else remember walking into retail stores as a kid and craning your neck completely upward to play one of the display consoles? Several screws had been left out and included in a bag, making my job that much easier. Xbox still uses these extra long torque screws in its latest consoles. Even though the plastic is see-through, they've hidden many of the goodies behind opaque metal panels. The least they could have done would have been putting in some LEDs. Seems like a waste of good transparency. We've got a solid, slightly dusty Seagate drive inside. The main data ribbon isn't installed, but the classic Molex connector is still there. I definitely don't miss those. A beefy Philips disk drive sits nearby. I'd completely forgotten how large disk drives used to be, and most modern computers don't even have them anymore. There are a few screws that hold the drive bay in the console. I'll unroute the power cable from the channel and lift the entire piece out of the console, followed by the disk drive. Now we get into the trouble. This console is in pretty good condition. Well, aside from these leaking capacitors, that's probably not good. Despite my intrusive thoughts telling me to see what these taste like, I think it best to continue being professional. Let's pop off the heatsink bracket and see how the thermal paste has held up. Turns out, not great. Either it's been removed by someone else, or the heat has caused it to degrade into powder. This will be something to fix later. There are a few more screws to take out and free the board. I can't really call this video a guide since some parts have already been removed, but I'm still going to treat it like a normal repair. I have found the dust collection plate, and my vacuum isn't making a dent in this. I'll clean this up by hand a bit later. These deep fried capacitors are inaccessible from the top, but have two solder points on the bottom. Solder wick can be used here, but it rarely gets all of it out. Instead, I'll switch to a wide chisel tip for the soldering iron that will allow me to hit both posts at the same time, and pull the peppery capacitor out from the other side. I'll repeat this process for all of them. There are five caps in total, and most have started to leak, so all of them need to be replaced to keep Matt at the top of his game. Now, you might notice an issue. The holes for the capacitors are still full of solder, and Wick isn't removing it enough, so I need to be a bit more creative. I'll do something that may seem counterproductive, but I'm going to add even more solder to fill these holes. This will allow my iron to melt both holes simultaneously and push the replacement capacitor into its new home. Sometimes the leg carries too much solder away from the hole as it travels through, so I'll go back over each leg and add solder to the hole again, ensuring everything is connected. A pair of wire snips will make short work of these legs, but make sure you don't let them go flying. These do not feel very nice when stepped on. After some cleaning, I'll add some fresh thermal paste to the absolutely tiny looking CPU. It's still amazing that this tiny chip helped power my childhood. Thankfully, Matt included all the missing screws in a bag that I can fully reassemble, though I will leave a few out so he can install that main data ribbon for the drives when he gets this back. With clean components, new capacitors, Let's see if this Xbox will have a new life ahead of it. Sure enough, we're up and running. But before I was satisfied, I asked Matt to send me some video after he got the ribbon installed and the console reconnected. Sure enough, a few days later, he sent me proof that this Xbox is back in service and right at home with some of the coolest Halo models I've ever seen. So today I revived not only an Xbox, but a lot of nostalgia. That's pretty cool. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.